mengucapkan uh, good afternoon untuk semua uh, yang berada dalam FB page Pantas Kusnetani. So, tengah hari ini kita akan bersama dengan Dr. Lo Heng Chin, Dermatologist Consultant uh, di Pantas Kusnetani yang akan memperkatakan tentang mitos dan fakta Uh, tentang jerawat ya Doktor So bersama kita dah ada, uh, ada Doktor dah tersedia So mungkin kita tunggu dalam beberapa minit lagi untuk uh, Welcome yang mana audience-audience yang, yang uh, free untuk join live kita Okay sebelum itu saya nak memperkenalkan Doktor Lo Doktor Lo boleh memperkenalkan uh, uh, diri Doktor uh, Berasal daripada mana dan di dalam kepegawaian. Selamat tengah hari kepada tuan-tuan dan puan-puan. Saya Dr. Lo. Uh, saya konsultan dermatologis. Sekarang berada sekarang berada kerja di Hospital Sultana Bahia dan saya visiting uh, di Hospital Pantai Sungai Petani setiap okay, setiap hari Kamis. So hari ini saya dibagi peluang untuk mencakap tentang sikit tentang mitos dan fakta uh, about jerawat lah sebab banyak orang memang salah faham tentang uh, tentang jerawat. So harap-harap hari ini boleh clear clear everybody's doubts lah. Okay. So my topic today is myth and facts about acne. So okay. So can I start? Okay. So. So without further ado, I will start my okay my talk today. So the talk is myth and facts about acne. So okay. So first of all, yang yang soalan pertama lah, what is acne? Is acne a disease? Okay. So a lot of question post. Uh, it's a lot of people ask lah. A lot of people salah faham tentang acne ni jerawat. Is acne a disease? Yes, no. Yes, maybe, probably. Tonton pemain boleh jawab lah. Adakah Acne ini disease atau satu condition biasa saja. So before I answer this question, so let's go through what is acne lah. So so some people call it pimple zit, or we call it medical doctors call it acne vulgaris. Vulgaris means actually it's common, very common, sangat biasa lah. So acne, you know, is a you, for the definition itself is a chronic inflammatory disease of skin, oil glands and hair follicles. Now, we can see this here is actually a chronic. Chronic means long standing. Long standing is actually is not that very acute, very short term. It is long term, long standing. Inflammatory disease, so it is inflammatory. It is inflammatory of the skin oil glands. When you look at this, when you look at this, this picture at the side there, you can look at this hair follicles. There is a gland that has oil glands and hair follicles. So acne is all about the disease about about these hair follicles and the oil glands, and then it's a treatable skin disorder. So is acne a disease? So I should answer the question. Actually, it's it's a yes lah. So a lot of people think that acne is not a disease. They no need to get treatment. So just delay in getting treatment, delay in seeing seeing doctor. So basically, you need to a lot of misconception in here. So you need to. Uh, I need to really re, uh, recap again and again. Acne is a disease. Actually, it's a treatable disease. So you need to seek treatment early. Okay. So basically, just go through what is acne. Like, oh, the culprit behind acne is an oily substance known as sebum. So actually, your skin, you can see in the photo there, that is actually lobule that's a yellow color there. It's, it's an oil, oil glands. Actually, these oil glands, what is the function of oil glands? Actually, secrete, secrete sebum. Sebum actually is secreted to keep our skin to getting too dry. So, so in acne, there's increase in sebum production. So, there are the increase, increment of the minyak, production of the minyak, keluar daripada this uh, glandular minyak from oil. After that, also have excess dead skins and bacterial clots of pores. You can see that here from photo. Okay. So there's uh, the opening there actually is this tightening. So the excess dead skin that actually can uh, clot it. So it causes obstruction over there. Okay, that's the sumbat basically. 
Then third, actually, actually there's overgrowth of acne bacteria. So bacteria can masuk, and then I can uh, overgrow them and grow gasana, and then, uh, then causing a lot of inflammations. So this basically this is all about acne jerawat lah. Okay. So myth and factor, mythos and factor. So acne happens overnight. A lot of people think that acne can happen overnight, right? So actually, facts that actually acne doesn't happen overnight. It starts with all these comedons, small comedons. First, your skin probably there's obstruction in the first place. After that, actually it can happen if there's it happens that inflames overnight, but it doesn't happen overnight. Okay. Another question usually uh, a lot of people would think that acne will go away by its own. So actually just, just leave it alone that it actually will go away by itself. So the fact is, acne typically does not resolve by its own on its own. Without treatments, acne can often progress and worsen. Okay? So you need to seek treatment for that. Next question is only teenagers get acne. So a lot of people think that only teenagers get acne. The answer is oh. So not only teenagers can get acne. Actually, basically, there are more than fifty percent of the patient acne patients can continue your acne, probably less severe into adulthood. In fact, some people don't develop acne until they are in their fifties. So although you are forties, you are thirty years old, you still can get acne. Okay. On and off, you still can get. So a lot of a lot of causes for that changes it changes in hormone, some greasy, unsuitable makeup, some skincare can trigger the breakups in adults. Okay. The acne can affect ninety percent of the teenager. Okay, most 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 uh most of the teenager will have a acne. The onset itself actually is usually is range about eight to twelve years old. Peak incidence for male is 16 to 19 years old and female is a bit earlier, it's 14 to 18 years old. You know that female actually they gain their puberty much earlier than the male. Okay. Then kenapa teenager prone to have any kenapa the American other jarawas for teenagers? Because one hits puberty when you when you grown up with puberty, that's increase and in, in the sex hormone, we call it androgen. Okay. So this androgen, what is this androgen? This androgen actually cause your oil gland to become overactive. So oil gland, you see the yellow color one, the oil gland become overactive and large that produce too much of oil and sebum. So basically, when you are teenage, when, when you are young, you have more and this uh, androgen, this hormone, they're causing your problem, the acne problem. So how does acne affect your life? So, Basically, acne, although it's very mild, it's not sometimes some people is very mild, but actually generally acne can cause a lot of problem in our, especially on teenager adolescents. It can disrupt our cell identity and leads to anxiety, anger, and even low self-confidence, as you, you can see. Okay. Moreover, that actually uh, acne also can cause a lot of huge psychosocial impact. So actually, this study actually found that there's depression was reported two or three times more prevalence in acne patients. There's also increased risk of suicidal ideations. So acne is also known to associated with decreased performance in work and school. So, so decreased performance, they definitely perform kerja atau sekolah. So, I think probably because of low, low self-confidence. Jika ada acne, kamu malu nak jumpa orang kan? So there's a decreased performance work and and then there's a study show that there's unemployment rate is high, higher among the acne, acne patients. So, jika pergi interview, jika kamu acne, I think the boss will take the the uh, muka yang clean, clear, compared to acne patient, acne acne uh, uh, patient lah. Okay. So, so this is actually a study we look at how we perceive the acne skin versus the clear skin. So not only acne patients suffer from psychological impact, but other people in society also have a very bad impression about acne. So these are the these are real six photos actually we, we have done a study in back into 2018. We've taken six photos of acne patients, different gender and different race. So we photoshop into the clear skin. You see clear skin? 
Uh, excuse me, can I enlarge? Can I enlarge? Okay, thanks. Okay. okay, so you see this, the study. Okay. So we, we then we ask, uh, we, we make a questionnaire and ask, uh, ask uh, the, the, we make a study and ask people, ask the society how they, uh, how they feel when they feel and we look at this photo with acne or without acne. So basically, the those with acne one actually perceive as unattractive, sad, lonely, distant, unhealthy, shy, insecure. You see so many negative things. Whereas without acne one, actually more good impressions. You see, they perceive as a healthy. Confident, happy, attractive, successful, and so on and so forth. So, because basically the conclusion that actually acne is negatively judged by our society. So, acne give a bad impression when you go to interview, go to see somebody. This acne will give you a very bad impression to other people. So that's why you need to treat our acne early. Okay. So how does acne look like everyone? I think probably everyone semua orang tahu kan, semua orang tahu macam mana. But how do we classify it? Macam mana apa klasifikasi kita? So basically, dia ada dua jenis non-inflammatory acne. So acne yang bukan uh, ada keradangan. So the term we quote actually here is comedon. You know comedon. So basically, is white heads or black heads. You can see the photo here. Uh, yeah, the photo is okay. So photo here. Uh, the left side one, standing pointer can point. No, no. The okay, the, the right hand side one, no. The hand side one actually is white heads. You can see the small, small bumps, skin colored bumps. Okay. So at the, at the side one, it's called black heads. We call it the open comedon. It's closed comedon or open comedon. So what happened is actually, what is the difference? Actually, both are similar. This is a closed comedon, actually, is exposed. So that's why the there's a black color because of oxidization of the serbium. So it appears black. Jadi, jadi hitam lah sini. So it's the black, black heads. Okay. So next, the other type is inflammatory acne. Inflammatory acne maksud dia ada keradangan. So they are present with red small bumps. You can see red small bumps or bumps with pus. So pus maksud dia ada nanah. So semua orang familiar kan, I think. So this is the uh, later stage of the acne. So in very severe acne, very yang jerawat and sangat teruk, we call it jerawat patu lah sometimes. We call it jerawat patu. You can see that. Okay, it's actually in this scenario, actually you can see there's a lot of very big nodule, very inflamed, and then a lot of pus. They discharge a lot of pus. Actually, there's a lot of nana. When you press it, a lot of nana. This kind of acne, if you don't treat it, it will cause a lot of scarring. Okay. So acne doesn't stop there. Actually, the post acne, there's a lot of complications. There are a lot of complications here. So inflamed, non-inflamed, inflamed, then you go into the post-inflammatory. So post-inflammatory, they are banyak. So we can cause erythema, pigmentation, scarring. So these different, different scar, like uh, this um, pigmentary changes. And then there's a scarring. So a lot of uh, parot. Okay. Then sometimes uh, the keloid, uh, you can see keloid. Okay. Remember that if you don't treat acne early, you can have a scar. Then acne scar is permanent. So there are different kind of acne scar. Uh, you can see here. First one is a rolling scar. You can see rolling scar is a U shape. High speed scar is kind of V shape, very deep down. It's one deep down. And box scar, acne scar, like a box, like like a squarish like of scar. So acne scar is permanent. So you need to treat your acne to prevent all this. Okay. So does acne come from parents? So yes, actually, if your family members have acne, for, for example, your parents, your sister and brothers actually have acne, you are more prone to have acne it's because you share the gene, same genetic components. Your eyes. If your father is oily skin, then probably you have inherited the oily skin as well. You are more prone to have acne. Okay, so so other risk factors like if you are obese because of hormonal changes, you have other disease like um, endocrine disease. You have others uh, uh, medical problem that affects your hormonal change. that causing a lot of hormonal changes. You may have acne vulgaris as well. Acne problem. 
So this is a famous uh, question. A lot of people, there's a misunderstanding. There's a famous misunderstanding. Oily food causes acne. What do you all think? No, oily food does not cause acne. So a lot of people think wrongly because our face is very oily because eat oily food and cause very oily. It's, 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 it's wrong. Actually, no studies show that actually oily food can cause uh, acne. Whereas actually is a food high in sugar can make your acne worse. So please, please remember this. This is very important. For example, ice cream or this very food high in sugar. We call it high glycemic index. I think probably some people, some people uh, have heard of these terms, high glycemic index. So what is high glycemic index? High glycemic index actually is a ranking for your carbohydrate. So for example, if low glycemic index, which means that actually the 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 the, the carbohydrate actually is what we call can is good quality carbohydrate, which means that actually can absorb slowly, will not increase your blood sugar so fast, this low glycemic index. So what we need to choose actually, we need to choose low glycemic index to prevent acne, to prevent your acne. So basically the study showed that the low glycemic index significantly reduced the total acne count. So for example, in this photo, when you choose donut and the apples, apples definitely have low glycemic index. Can. Then the donut may make is actually has higher glycemic index and make your sugar level high after you consume the the, the, the food okay so these are the actually there's an example of low glycemic index and high glycemic index food actually for example uh you choose breakfast you choose raw the oat instead of complex you choose pasta you choose spaghetti instead of fried bihun so these are the things that you can you can look into our uh, into the, the lot of internet actually talk about low in glycemic index and high glycemic index. Actually, it helps in diabetic as well, other diseases as well. So for those who have acne one, preferably choose low glycemic index. For example, the fruits also gets a low glycemic index. Apples, orange, banana, actually it has low glycemic index compared to watermelon. So you choose those have low glycemic index. Okay. So next will be a famous uh, uh, question. It's a controversial that does milk make your acne worse? The answer is yes. There's a recent study actually show that consumptions of low fat or skim milk, but not full fat milk, full fat milk, so fresh milk, was possibly associated with acne, which means that if you have acne, you need to cut down uh, your milk intake. First of all, if you want to take milks, you probably choose fresh milk or uh, full fat milk, so don't choose the low fat skin milk. And then the study also showed that to all the dairy products like milk, yogurt, or cheese actually in here can make your acne worse. So, probably, usually, I will advise my patients not to, to cut down all this food. Okay. Okay, other things actually, for example, smoking can make your acne worse two or three times higher risk if you smoke to get acne and stress stress because of hormonal changes okay the hormonal changes that make your acne worse so third one is improper facial therapy or saloon massage so the third one on the bottom there improper facial therapy or saloon ma facial massage if improper one can make your acne worse okay so because of covid19 we have uh, everyone is actually wearing masks now actually masks also actually can contribute to, can worsen your acne. So what happens is when you wear mask, there's a friction, a lot of friction gets a run. So there's a lot of irritation. So once there's a friction irritation, the, the bacteria can easily go in. That's a more close cause. So, okay, the code the terms actually, you call it mask plus acne, it's called it mask knee. Okay, so. Acne, means you don't wash your face enough is that true the fact is acne is not because of your skin is dirty yet. so just now i mentioned because of your your oil glands like your reactives and block that so uh, or you don't wash your wash your face enough so if you wash your face too much actually so you can cause acne so the and the, the other hand actually you don't really do really what we call overwash your face you don't uh, recommend that actually wash your face twice later i will talk about this uh, washing and cleansing okay so now we 
move on to so how to treat the acne. So basically, these are the chart that actually we use. So we differentiate into the mild, moderate, and severe. So in mild disease, we use different kind of approach. Severe, we use different kind of approach. Okay. But in simple words, for a, for a uh, simple words, for those uh, 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 have those that suffer by acne, right? so the the main set treatment actually differentiate also mild, moderate, and severe as well. So these are the, the treatment that we need to you need to use. We, we, we will prescribe to our patients. First, firstly, is topical anti medications or mild acne. Moderate, we actually probably will add on plus or minus oral antibiotic. Severe acne, we will uh, add on isotretinoin. So the other anti there's another uh, drugs that actually can treat acne very well. So after that. We talk about adjunct therapy or adjunct therapy, such as anti-clean, anti-acne cleanser products, comedone extraction, chemical peeling, and light therapy. So basically, now I want to stress on actually the acne is a disease. So you need to treat your acne first before you talk about add-on therapy. So, but a lot of people actually talk about add-on therapy first before they go into mainstay therapy. Okay. So they, they make it like the ballet already. So basically, we need to treat your acne first before you talk about it on you don't a lot of people actually they don't they don't think the acne is disease so they, they, they hold on the changing keep on changing the anti acne cleanser or products but without putting on an, a very effective topical anti -acne medication so that's why the acne is not getting better so this is you must remember this is a very important point you need to treat your acne first before you talk about what a product okay so to to, to use so actually first of all topical anti acne medication this is a very effective for the mild to moderate acne so important in both induction or remission this will cure your acne and even after you cure it's actually important to put on to maintain your acne to prevent the acne flare so usually we use it in combination we combine one or two two medication for that okay so first of all i will mention this again and again is benzoic peroxide it's a very effective medication so the second one is retinoid Third one is antibiotic. The fourth one is azelaic acid. So azelaic acid, uh, yeah, these four actually the four four anti acne medication you can use. Okay. So first of all, is anti topical benzo benzoic peroxide is very uh, effective. It's actually antibacterial, and it can remove your know, dead skin. And there's a, a little bit of anti inflammatory property. Actually, it's an over-the-counter medication, which means that you can buy it without prescription. You can buy in a pharmacy without prescription. So usually we combine with other topical, okay, combine retinoids. Later I'll talk about that. And then topical benzoyl peroxide is very good for inflammatory lesions, which means that for the nana one actually is other nana one actually is very good. It's, but it's not good for those whiteheads and blackheads. Okay, so you put on how you're going to put it, how to apply it. Apply on the red spot in the morning once daily. Okay, just once daily. Okay. Do not apply more in hopes of getting clear skin faster. You don't apply more than once, basically. Using too much will cause dryness and irritation. So, so I understand a lot of people have acne, they want to get it faster, so they they, they will be anxious because of one or two spot rate uh acne. So what? And cepat kan, so so lebih dia letak lebih dari satu kali, it cause more dryness and irritation. So must understand that what you use and how you use it. This is very important, sangat sangat penting. Okay, so how to? So next will be topical retinoid. Okay, what is that retinoid? A retinoid actually is synthetic derivative of vitamin A. Actually, it's a vitamin A product. It's a vitamin medic vitamin A product medication. Tak sama dengan vitamin A retinol in the uh cosmetic is it's not the same huh? it's not the same that one is in cosmetic is this one is top, topical retinol is a medication okay there are two types two types topical retinoid or tra topical adapalin you can see enough so it function is anti-comedogenic which means that prevent the comedon we prevent the white hits and black hits also removal of the comedon it can remove the comedon also, actually, it's good anti-inflammatory, which means it reduce keradangan. We reduce inflammation, kurangkan keradangan. So, dia boleh kurangkan kamu punya komedon, whiteheads and blackheads. Also, kurangkan semua keradangan. So, actually, this is effective. Topical retinoids is effective in both lesions. 
non-inflammatory and inflammatory. Okay. So whereas just now benzoproxen only effective in the inflammatory then pass the one we will pass on. Okay. 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 Can I go? Okay. So how effective is topical retinoids? Actually, it's very, very effective. So a lot of people don't understand that because this is very effective. We can, we can see it from a study. Retinoid 0.1% reduced microcomedon by 80% after two weeks of application. Only two weeks, you can see a reduction of the, 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 the comedons. Okay? So, so one of the actually... Uh, uh, tretinoin, there are two types. One is tretinoin, one is adapalene. So adapalene actually is a newer, you can see this adapalene. It's called it adapalene. It's a newer generation of retinol. So it's also very effective. And then adapalene is good, better than tretinoin because uh, it's more tolerable. It's actually, it's, it's gel form. That, for example, this T-tree ADA is gel form, provide easy applications for the acne area. And then there's a the added on glycerin and glycerin inside for extra moisturizations. So your skin will not be so dry, la, basically. You use a newer generation of tret ret retinol. Okay. How to apply topical retinol? So how to apply? Basically, you need to use it at night. Must use it at night only because it's you use in morning, it's photosensitizing, which means that that are the effect in morning. Okay. Use a gentle cleanser or regime to avoid over cleansing. So just gently wash your face, cuci muka dengan gently, jangan cuci dengan terlalu kuat. Okay, after that, apply a thin layer. So apply a thin layer to the entire affected areas. So semua, jika semua muka ada jerawat, kamu letak semua muka. Semua muka. So a very thin layer. Only once a day, use it at night. If your acne, once your acne clears up, use it and maintenance therapy. So, which means that you can still continue to put on even though you don't have acne. So, you can continue to put on. Basically, you just put on to maintain it to prevent. So, for prevention. So, they are topical tretinoid. They are to prevent that they are to merawat. They are dual function. So, prevent tapolo pakai tepi hari. Actually, you can apply. You can apply much like alternate day atau apply twice or three times a week, something like that. But remember that actually there are adverse effects as well. So there are a lot of side effects. If you apply too much or too frequent, sometimes you may experience erythema, which means redness, dryness, irritation with skin, burning and itching sensation. So mild irritation can be part of the treatment process, usually subside in one or two weeks. Remember that, okay? Next will be topical antibiotic. You can use it. Topical antibiotic is quite uh, effective as well. It's especially we eat here is tetramycin, is topical clindamycin can combine with benzoproxide or retinoid. Normally, I combine with retinoid, topical retinoid, okay? Useful for mild to moderate inflammatory acne, but actually limited anti-comedogenic. So, they are merawat, uh, jerawat yang ada nana, okay? They are tak merawat, jerawat, uh, whiteheads and blackheads, okay? So, remember that topical antibiotic never used as monotherapy. You cannot just use topical antibiotic alone. You must combine with other things to make it work. And then the other thing is to prevent bacteria resistance. Sebab kamu guna satu saja, nanti bacteria resistance, dia ada tak ada efek lepas itu. Okay? So, must combine. So, tetramycin actually proven efficacy. And then this is a gel form is for normal skin. Okay? Gel form from a normal skin. Dia ada formulation yang satu lagi, the lotion form for oily skin. Okay? The same thing is in clindamycin. Sometimes I use this lotion for... Uh, Jerawat ke badan, senang sikit untuk sapu, untuk lotion, okay? Next, if a patient have a more uh, severe or moderate acne, so normally what we consider next step is to start oral antibiotic, okay? So duration usually not more than 3 months, hanya 3 bulan. So selalunya le tak, lebih daripada 4 bulan. So an oral antibiotic is started combined with topical therapy. So they are combined with this... Uh, just now I mentioned benzoproxide or topical antibiotic or this thing to topical retinoid. Okay, it must combine. So antibiotic, apa antibiotic yang kita start is tetracycline, doxycycline, minocycline, or erythromycin. These are the antibiotic you start. So antibiotic makan tiap-tiap hari. So selama 
dua atau tiga bulan selama tengok kan dah. Okay. So, okay. So usually antibiotic is well tolerated. Actually, there's not much of side effect. Then oral antibiotic is not only kills all the bacteria in the acne. Also has this uh, anti-inflammatory that can reduce inflammation of acne. So we use oral antibiotic. So next, very serious one. This is only can prescribed by dermatologists. This is called is oral isotretinoin. I think probably those very serious may have started this medication. It's very, very effective. Oral isotretinoin is a vitamin A compound. So only can prescribed by dermatologists. Why? Because there are side effects that are secondary. Satu side effect yang terpenting sekali adalah teratogenik, which means that siapa yang mengandung jika makan ubat ini, uh, baby akan ada jadi terjejas lah. So fetus akan terjejas. So actually it's very strict. We control in Malaysia only can prescribe by dermatology, only by prescribed by skin specialist. So strict contraception practice maksud dia mesti uh, for um, is required for female patients. So pregnancy should be should not be attempted up until one month after discontinuation therapy. Okay. So saline into oral isotretinoin also also uh, can cause a lot of dryness of your lips, dryness of your skin. Okay. So this is this are the side effect lah. Normally we will check your blood, so check your liver function, make sure it's okay first before we start this isotretinoin. But anyhow, the side effect is very low. It's tolerable and very. The most important thing is very effective to treat to those very severe acne. Okay, so we have medication to treat. Okay. So after all, I cover with all these mainstay treatments, the therapy mainstay medications. So after we cover this, if you you need to go through all these medication first before you go to add on therapy like adjunct therapy. Okay. So don't uh, don't you change your keep on changing your product all those things without putting on medication actually your acne will not be get better usually so another one actually is a very common uh, myth uh, that actually popping pimples makes them go away sooner is that true basically squeezing pimples can lead to additional inflammation infections and scarring so basically we don't encourage people to squeeze your pimple, especially those with uh, inflammatory acne, those with past one. So, so don't squeeze your pimples. If you squeeze your pimples, you leave a lot of scarring. So that's the other part. Okay. So again, I'm going to stress on again. So talk about add-on therapy. So go through the mainstay therapy first, mainstay therapy, the first line therapy first, before you add-on therapy. Because add-on hanya bantu sikit, dia bukan untuk merawat. Uh, acne, okay, they are the to skin, okay. So washing and cleansing, a lot of people will ask, so how frequent should I wash my face for in acne? So actually you wash your face twice a day is reasonable. So probably if very oily skin, probably can wash another one time, three times, that's it, don't overwash your face because excessive face washing is comedogenic. Because why you wash your face, it's too dry. Once it's, your face is too dry, your skin is trying to produce more oil. So it causes more irritations. And then somehow it costs more, or uh, sometimes it costs other skin problems like eczema if you wash your face too frequent. Use a gentle cleanser. Okay. So how to choose your gentle cleanser? You choose probably if your skin is very oily, sangat berminyak, you can choose the cleanser or product that contains of this pro this component. Glycolic acid, AHA, alpha hydroxy acid, glycolic acid, salicylic acid, or benzoyl peroxide. So there are a lot of products in the market actually the contents of uh, uh, this, these are the product actually may help to uh, for your acne to so clean up your skin you know, will be very helpful will be helpful for your acne okay so one of the product actually by the Taiso actually this is one your acne cleansing bar you can use it to clean so it's actually there's a multiple uh, function there's bacteria basically it's bacterial cider which means they kill bacteria because it contains Taiso Okay, so you can use it to basically to clean your. This is I usually prescribe this one. I use this one for the body acne. Okay. Next will be chemical pills. Actually, if a uh, chemical pill actually is uh, this can be used as a juvenile to facial acne. So there are various chemical preparation used for epidermal exfoliation. So basically, this is a pro, this chemical chemical pill is a is a procedure. We use a, 
uh, mild acne, mild acid, namely glycolic acid, okay, salicylic acid or salicylic acid to put on your face for a few minutes or usually two minutes, then we have a buffering to put a sodium bicarb to get rid of the acid. Then uh, in order to have your skin peeling, then dry off your acne. But okay, this is actually uh, one of the studies actually show that it's actually effective to treat those acne. So uh, to, to do it after six treatments, okay, do it bi-weekly after six treatments to get a result for that, okay? Others, adjuvant therapy is not that recommended. For example, phototherapy, phototherapy is not very recommended. That's not very common in our setting. Uh, so I would not talk too much about this. And then complementary alternative medicine, there's actually so far, there are a lot of things ongoing in the market, in the advertisement. So far, actually, there's insufficient evidence to recommend any specific kind of complementary or alternative medicine, okay? To, uh, to, to eat or to, to a lot of products actually they claim that actually they can cure the acne or this thing, but it's actually is not recommended. There's actually not much of study, okay, to, to, to prove that actually it can cure that. So must remember, there is no quick fix for acne. You must be sick doctors helps early, be patient and give your acne treatment time to work. And treating acne often requires a combination of treatments. You need to combine sometimes your oral, okay? It could take a few weeks or several weeks before you can see an improvement in your skin. Sometimes I'll give it a usually two or three weeks before you can see the improvement, okay? So this is the one of my patients have very severe acne. You can see that they have an olular cystic acne, a lot of scarring, you see? So after that, I started treatments with the top, combined with topical treatment with oral treatment after several weeks after i think this is after two months actually it's get very much better actually clear out completely so acne can be treated with effective treatment okay so just to this is my last slide actually just to uh introduce you if you're not aware of we have this person dermatology in malaysia www.dermatology.org.my where you can look uh, look for your dermatologist. So if you have skin problem, you have severe, severe acne problem, uh, you need to look for dermatologists, go to this website, you can click on the stage. The, the, you can look for the, the, your state, how many dermatologists there, then you can look for them, okay? So, so thank you. Okay. Q&A, okay. So I just follow the Q&A. Okay. Okay. So now I follow with uh, some of the questions posted in the Facebook. Lah. Vitamin B5 play a big role in acne. Okay, uh, so far just now I mentioned lah, a lot of things that actually they, they claim that zinc, somehow zinc, zinc is a lot of people talk about zinc, all the zinc, vitamin C, vitamin B5, all those things. Uh, so far there's, there's no much of study to show that actually this help. So I would not recommend so vitamin B5. So you still need to stick on just now what I mentioned, the topical treatment, which is very effective, sangat, sangat effective. So why you want to go into uh, other uh, vitamin B5 or thing? So you, you, you take vitamin B5 without putting on your anti-acne medication, you will not get your acne better. So basically, I would not recommend. So second question, Kuli Bajarawat, Boleka Pakai Moisturizer? Okay. This is a very good question. Huh? Boleh pakai ke moisturizer? Actually, yes. Actually, actually, you should pakai moisturizer. Kamu kena pakai moisturizer if you have acne. So if you have very oily, oily skin, in the in initial phase, you have oily skin, probably you just you don't need to pakai moisturizer so often. But after all, after you treat your you treat your acne, your skin getting dry and dry, you need to put on moisturizer. So you choose those moisturizers not too oily. Kamu kena pilih moisturizer yang sesuai. Ada setengah-setengah product, they actually, uh, actually is not too, they are tak berminyak sangat. You can choose, kamu boleh pilih moisturizer tak berminyak untuk pakai. But don't overput, don't, which means that you just put once or twice a day. Pakai satu, dua kali, satu hari cukup. Tengok kulit kan anda. So, jika lau kamu biar kulit sangat kering, you need to, kamu kena pakai lebih. Atau jika kamu kulit sangat berminyak, so you you only pakai once a day. So, not you don't need to pakai so many times a moisturizer. I need to go faster because a lot of questions now. Okay. 
Okay, what is difference between skin with acne and breakout? Uh, actually, basically the same. Uh, skin with acne and breakout is the same. Breakout is just a normal term, normal layer, just normal term. So skin with acne is a, basically the same. So I don't see any difference. Is is it vitamin A, C, E good for skin? So uh, good for acne or good for skin? Actually, basically these are the thing. If you if you if you want to answer this question, basically vitamin A, C, which which means vitamin C is good for skin. But the thing is, you no need to take supplement. Basically, you take more foods that contain vitamin A, C, or E. Actually, is sufficient enough to uh, to to maintain your skin health. No need to to purposely buy any supplement for vitamin A, C, and E. As for you at acne, you need to go go back to anti medication, the anti acne medication, topical one, sapu one. Okay, so this is the question. So if makan kacang or hit hiti food like BBQ, bakute or steamboat can trigger your acne. So just now I have, actually I have answered your question. Lah. So I should, have, I should have answer question. So oily food can cause acne or not? Actually it's no. So basically food high in sugar, high in sugar. So so if you eat hiti food like BBQ, then you in the same time you drink soft drink you drink coca-cola and maybe yes like you can trigger your acne it's not because of the the, the, the heaty food or steamboat itself okay so okay kulit berjerawat untuk remaja macam mana nak elakkan dari berulang okay so remaja you so any uh just now i mentioned you need to go through kulit yang berjerawat maksud dia bila jerawat you kamu kena pakai ubat jerawat dulu so assess skin, bagi doctor assess skin, just prescribe ubat jerawat. So ubat jerawat kena merawat dulu. So jika yang teruk, kita boleh start antibiotic sementara waktu bagi 2-3 bulan untuk stabilkan dia. Once actually stable, we need to, kita kena maintain kamu punya jerawat dengan ubat-ubat seperti yang saya cakap topical retinol atau topical benzac, ben, benzyl peroxide untuk untuk kurangkan ulang, untuk kan prevent flare lah basically. So, so, uh, so, question ini maksud dia kenalkan uh, mendapat rawatan dengan cepat, nah, oh, okay? So the num question number seven, my grandchildren have eczema from small, always seeing doctor, antibiotics, other medicine give, given. My question is still when an age we prolong, uh, okay? So this is a question about eczema. It's not a question about acne, lah. So basically, acne, eczema. See how how bad is your your uh, first of all, how old is your grandchildren so actually, and how bad is the acne? Hello, oh, eczema. Sorry, this is eczema. So maksud dia adalah eczema. So basically, most of the children, most of the children can outgrow from eczema. Usually, they will reach about nine, ten years old during puberty. Their eczema usually tends to be mild. So these are the, the, the age that I can give you around that puberty, the puberty age, actually the maxima will be mild. So before that, you need to really taking care of your, your, your skin, putting on a lot of moisturizers, uh, putting on more moisturizer when there's a flat and you see doctor to put on some topical medication to try to control your eczema. Okay. Okay, numbers. I hope I answer your question. Okay. So how to moisturize our skin at age? five so at age of five how to moisturize moisturize our skin at age five series i don't really understand probably probably how to moisturize our skin at in in children basically it's the same you can moisturize your skin uh depends on what condition your skin is very dry you can moisturize them many many times a day normally i would recommend so two to three times a day if your skin is dry so for acne you can moisturize your skin twice a day so for eczema, you can you can more than two to more than four or five times a day. Whenever you feel itchy or feel dry, you can put on moisturizer. So it's actually applies to adults or children. It doesn't uh it does it, there's no difference between children and adults. Okay. Number eight, macam mana hilangkan pigmentasi? Okay, pigmentasi due to the acne, due to the jerawat pigmentasi. Banyak pesakit ada pigmentasi daripada acne kan, daripada jerawat kan. So selalunya pigmentasi dia akan ambil masa sikit untuk hilang sendiri. 
So, so ini bukan parut yang yang what we call permanent, bukan parut yang uh, permanent lah maksudnya. Jika ada parut yang permanent yang lain cerita itu dia akan permanent. Tapi memang nanti selalu bukan parut yang dia akan ambil masa sikit untuk hilang. So selalunya kita boleh prescribe sedikit ubat macam azelaic acid one of them, azelaic acid untuk kurangkan pigmentasi. Atau ada ada produk tertentu untuk kurangkan untuk uh, pigmentasi. Selalu saya akan prescribe se seperti topical retinoid also boleh bantu uh, kurangkan pigmentasi. So uh, yang penting sekali itu kena rawat acne kamu cepat jangan picik dia teruk. Jika picik semua itu dia akan tinggal pigmentasi yang teruk. So jangan picik hanya sapu ubat. Okey. Untuk merawat kamu punya jerawat cepat untuk kurangkan pigmentasi. How to prevent and improve acne scar effectively? So how to prevent the question is very simple. You treat your acne early. So this is how we prevent. So you cannot, uh, if you, you don't treat acne, you, you really, how to prevent you do, you don't treat early, you can have the scarring. The other thing is don't squeeze your acne. Don't squeeze your acne. If you squeeze your acne, you tend to have scar. Okay. How to Im improve acne scar effectively? Uh, basically, acne scar is permanent. There's no way we can apply anything to reduce it. There are certain products actually, we, we know that there's certain product you can apply it. You can try for that. But actually, if there's scar is there, it's permanent. So we need to do other things. For example, uh, next time you need to do a CO2 laser, we need to do some substation, some, uh, put some TCA cross, what we call acid, to reduce the scarring. So to treat the scar, this is another topic to how to treat the scar. So in the first place, you need to treat your acne to prevent the scar. Okay, anggaran berapa untuk dapatkan rawatan dari doktor? <laughs> so uh, this is uh, actually treating acne. Acne itself, the medication itself is not that very expensive. Jangan takut sangat uh, macam bertahun tahun no. It's actually, it's not. So semua medication yang saya recommend itu sangat uh, actually sangat murah. Antibiotic also sangat murah. Is it bukan sangat sangat uh, what we call that sangat mahal. So don't worry about it. Okay. So the last one, last question. Kenapa jerawat yang sudah pulih kembali anda ada selepas berapa berapa bulan? Pertama sekali jerawat seperti yang saya cakap ialah penyakit kronik. Kronik itu long standing. Sebab kamu kamu masih mungkin masih muda, masih uh, hormon, masih banyak hormon lagi. So kamu punya uh, kelenjar minyak masih banyak aktif. So that's why kamu akan ada ada, ada flare ada jerawat balik. So itu itu uh, dia akan ada akan ada. Sampai sampai ada orang sampai empat umur empat puluh lima puluh pun ada jerawat itu memang saya cuba banyak. So tu macam mana nak buat untuk prevent uh, prevent jerawat? Actually, after you clear, after you treat your acne, selepas kamu merawat kamu punya acne in, for, the, for the first initial phase, so kamu kena sapu continue sapu ubat jerawat. Walaupun kamu punya kulit sudah clear, kamu kena continue sapu. Tapi kamu tak perlu sapu tiap-tiap hari. Kamu can you can kamu boleh sapu macam Uh, dua atau tiga kali satu minggu sahaja untuk kurangkan dia akan uh, dia tu uh, kembali dia mesti jerawat kembali, okay? So this uh, okay, I hope you answer the question. Anything else? Okay, okay. so uh, if you have more problems, actually any inquiry ada ada soalan lagi, can the uh, what we call that? You can can you share this? Okay. You can go to my Facebook page or my Instagram to leave a message to me, so I can uh, try to help you all. And uh, I will be visiting the hospital Pantai, uh, hospital Pantai Sungai Petani every Thursday from eight uh, from eight thirty to five p.m. Okay, so I hope that today I help you help you all to clear up your doubts and harap harap boleh bantu semua dapat ada sedikit pemahaman tentang jerawat. Okay.